Good day all, and welcome to another smashing, DAG, The Aviator video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Cheers. Welcome folks. Sorry if I haven't had a lot of updates lately. I got a torn rotator cuff on my right shoulder. It's making it hard to work on the air bike. And I had gotten COVID, and I've been busy with work and family, and the hobby has just taken a back seat. So this is an air bike update. If you're here for my radio control aircraft stuff, I'm getting those videos done ASAP. So in this video, we're going to talk about how I made the ribs for the air bike, as I've gotten quite a few people asking to do a 2.0 type video on the ribs. So in the air bike drawings is a... Uh, layout for the jig that you're going to build your ribs on and it's a really good tool folks and if you build the jig exactly per the drawings it makes it a million times easier to make the ribs for this airplane so what I did was I went into AutoCAD and I basically drew the ribs and drew the gussets and drew all the parts I was going to need these ribs are very uh, monotonous. I mean, there's a lot of them, and you want to be able to get every one of them perfect. So once I've drawn it all into CAD, I transferred it into 3D. So I went in my 3DS Max software and started drawing a lot of parts in 3D because I've learned that when I see things in 3D, it's a lot easier to see how it's going to go together when I build it. And I wanted to 3D print, you know, the gussets and different parts and see how it lined up. So the final design I came up with was I was going to be able to build a rib, turn the table 180 degrees, and then build another rib. That way I could build two ribs and let the epoxy cure overnight. So I bought it just a piece of board from the hardware store, and I would lay out all these parts on it and see how it would work. And then basically, you know, build one rib and you know make sure that everything was perfectly straight folks it's so important i would then rotate it and build another rib and essentially i would let it then dry 12 overs 12 hours overnight so i could get away with building four ribs a day two in the morning two in the evening this way it wouldn't take forever as there's 13 ribs per wing, 26 ribs total. So here I printed out on my uh, plotter the paper backing, laid out 3D parts, and then lined them up to make sure what I'd actually drawn in 3D lined up with the real plan. And I checked the dimensions between the drawings and my plan. Then I took a piece of plexiglass and laid it down and then laid all the parts on top of the plexiglass. The plexiglass is so that I could put wax on it and any, any epoxy that dripped through or leaked through wouldn't stick. Now I did get some pushback on going the old method and using the nails instead of the staples. And I'm not sure why everybody was so against the nails. These are nails that were certified for the use in aircraft okay aircraft sprues used to sell these but i don't see them on their website anymore but i believe wick still have them then i went into my autocad program and drew what all my gussets were going to look like and this made my life a million times easier folks to be able to cut all these out just made it so easy and i would stack layers of the thin birch plywood on each other i used 3m 77 i believe it was and just put a real light misting on there that i would sand off and would hold it all together so that i could just make an awful lot of these at one time and there are a ton of gussets folks and as you can see in the top of the picture there i used bags to bag every one of them in it it just made it a lot easier you got to be able to sort all this out folks or it just feels like it's going to take forever to build these ribs and it is it is very monotonous and you've got to just be patient now here's one thing that was very upsetting with aircraft spruce all the quarter inch spruce i've got uh just didn't have much consistency between the thicknesses in it some of it was point uh two four five some of it was 2.501 it was just a mess so it took me a long time to sort pieces that were even close to being equal i did reach out to aircraft spruce and in many ways they just act like i was complaining it, it was really it's 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 amazing they used to be and maybe they still are a great company this was during covid so maybe they were understaffed but it was a mess 
Now here's where you've got to make sure you are very, very precise. This opening between these two pieces of wood here is actually where the rear spar is going to slide through. So hopefully I can kind of show you in this illustration here. If you look to the right here and see that rear spar, see the front spar just butts up on the front of the rib. The rear spar has to go through. So, you know, if you've messed up your front spar a little bit, you can still kind of wiggle the room around it a little bit and just get you know, the spars to kind of line up. But the rear spar has an actual opening in the ribs that has to slide in there. So me, I cheated about a 32nd of an inch when I built my jig to make that opening plenty big enough that that spar would slide into that opening. You're also going to have to modify the root ribbon number one for the hard points. Now, don't forget when you're building those spars, you know, sometimes when you use clamps or a vise or whatever you're using to clamp some of the wood together, it ends up being a little bit different thicknesses along the entire length of the spar. And I'm talking 64th of an inch. So if you make that opening too tight, you're going to be in there sanding and whittling a little bit to try to get your, your ribs to slide over that rear spar. And uh, now mine worked good because I knew from other people that you want to be very cautious about that. Now you'll see here that mine fits like a glove. Some places it was a little bit tight, but I never really had to sand. Uh, I don't think I had to sand any to get these to slide on. But just be really, really cautious of this part, folks. If there's anything I would warn you about, it would be this. So overall, folks, I just wanted to do a kind of a brief update video on the way that the ribs are built on this. I know I've done a video, and this is kind of redundant. But uh, the ribs, to me, are one of the, I shouldn't say hardest or most difficult, but it's just one of the things that you've got to get right, or your whole wing just does not look right. I mean, it won't be straight. And these builds have to be fun, folks. I've heard of people having nightmares getting these ribs onto that rear spar, and luckily I didn't. So thanks for watching my video, everybody. Rock on and have a fabulous day.